So imagine we have to solve this, guys. This is a chemical plant, the reactor right here. It has a scrubber. It has a decanter, which separates liquid from maybe other solids or a byproduct. And we have this distillation column. So let's say we have all the temperatures, feed composition, and number of plates. We have everything to calculate the process. And suddenly we have a change on pressure. Or maybe this temperature right here fails and increases by 2 Celsius. Or maybe the mass flow increases due to the demand on the plant. So how can we model this without actually modeling each time with the given temperature? That will be a really very difficult task to do, especially every day, especially if this is a very complex plant. Imagine having this. Everything changes. Let's say we have this chemical plant. If this plant number one, let's say this is plant number two, this is unit number three, and this is unit number four. Well, if each depends on the previous one, a change in one will make a change in two, which makes a change in three, and so on. So how can we model this without actually going one by one modeling by hand? Typically, this is why we use process modeling. Process modeling and simulation is very important in the chemical industry, especially to get actual data. It makes us not only a easier work, but faster. We take less time to analyze the data. Then we take multiple and simultaneous uh, processes or process simulations. We can take different real life scenarios, so that's also good. Different change on raw material, for instance. Now it also allows us to calculate the pricing and cost depending on the raw material, the plant cost, the utilities, and so on. And it is interesting in order to see, as stated before, what will happen if there is a change in temperature or pressure, let's say right here. All these what if scenarios are here. So that's what I will say very interesting. Not only that, this is already a very common practice in the industry. Typically, petrochemical oil and gas plants are already simulating processes, especially with high seas and Aspen Plus. And well, other kind of industry, more generic or broad industry, production of ammonia gas, hydrogen gas, chlor, alkali industry, and so on. Some benefits besides the one we already saw is, well, we can calculate specific data on stream flows, the composition changes, to check out uh, physical properties, how to define and understand the signing operation of unit operations, and we can verify mass and energy balances, some transport phenomena, especially on distillation units, and so on. It helps us design, uh, which decreases the time. With this, we decrease the number of experiments, and we can do less and spend less in pilot plants, because we already know the results, so we go with a much more informed data, rather than actually do the plant or pilot plant by itself. Now operations. Well, it helps us to improve the existing process, so if you have a process, you can simulate it and check out the what-if scenarios, eventually get a decrease on maybe heat duty or an increase in purity and so on. Also, it helps us for safety analysis, check out which species or uh, streams, units, operations are in hazard, and plenty of other. You can check out here, it's better. Of course, it's much better to have a curriculum on simulation it makes you a better engineer especially if you're going to process engineering that's almost a let's say a must now it's also good for analytical and numerical minds because you understand easily you can separate distribute and split a problem and let's say work for it understand the plant composition how it can be modeled how can it be changed and so on also, it's good for debugging and fixing. Many times in real life, you don't know how to fix or debug. You can do it on the plant, and if it works on the simulation, maybe, hopefully, it works on real life. Now, that's why we use uh, chemical process simulation. 